Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now nah, worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. When it comes to the ocean, fishy fashion counts. But it's definitely not a case of one size or colour. Suits all. Deep down in the watery depths, there are body shapes and patterns to suit everyone. And sea creatures are ultra smart at using their outfits to stay ahead of the game. And their enemies. But what they don't have themselves, they can make or steal. It's time to delve deep into the ocean's catwalk. On Barney's Barrier Reef. Introducing our first model animal on today's fishy fashion show. He's a lean green swimming machine. With his slim figure, the sea snake can grace the catwalks of the ocean with ease. Not exactly an hourglass figure, but this may be his only flaw. His skinny physique allows him to swim in a figure of eight, dive and wedge into crevices. Uh, excuse me. With his paddle tail and shimmering coat, he's a dashing sight as he zips around the ocean. Yes, he has magnificent poise and movement. Uh, until you take him out of the water. Oh, yes. On land, he doesn't strut his stuff in quite the same way, but put back in water, he can dive deep, deep down, sometimes as far as 90 metres. Wow, that's nearly the length of Big Ben. And this is his cousin, the banded sea crate. Again, with a magnificent movement as he displays this season's must-have black and white stripes. Now, these markings are visually stunning, but may also serve to show the rest of the ocean who's boss. <laughs> a model start to our catwalk. So, who is linked to our first skinny contender? <laughs> Our second model sports a very fashionable polka dot coat. And sometimes a leopard skin print. Very now, sweetie. Really quite a graceful mover. Definitely curvier than our sea snake, he hides in crevices as he doesn't like to show off his physique. <laughs> So, here is our second fashionable fishy, the moray eel. He's not the best looker in the ocean. He looks like an old man without his false teeth. No. Who's he talking to? Well, no one. They do that to pump water over their gills so they can breathe. I have the perfect accessory for him. Brown bag over his head, sorry. Hey! He doesn't no. need good looks. No. His skinny body helps him hunt and hide. And his pretty coat helps him blend in. Again, underwater fashion is cool, but practical. Yeah, but at least our skinny sea snake manages to look good at the same time. So the moray eel is linked to the sea snake through their long, skinny bodies. Who's next in our ocean catwalk? Next, over on our coral catwalk, the lovely Christmas tree worms, wearing this season's yellow and electric blue incredibly well. Agreed. They have some of the best outfits in the ocean, especially for a worm. And they look like designer toilet brushes. Or Christmas trees, hence the name. But they use their shape to burrow quickly back into their coral tubes whenever they're threatened. <laughs> I like this little feather duster worm. Ah, oh, bless it. Although he does look like something my grandma would use to get rid of cobwebs. Our wary worms are then connected to the moray eel by their shyness. And by the way, they nifty use their shape to quickly hide away. And that links them nicely to our next contender. So tell me, Jem, who's this funny fellow? Um, has he forgotten his fins? He's going around in circles. I know, he's not the most graceful of movers. You can say that again. His fins look a bit like giant eyelashes. Now, they're not going to get him very far. Well, it's a good job he has another trick up his sleeve, then. This fella is a puffer fish. He may look comical, but when he's angry, you soon know about it. Whoa, what happened there? Who blew him up? Well, that's his party trick. Puffer fish can blow themselves up to three times their size by sucking in water. It only happens when they're really scared, though. Oh, I see. Like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> well, yeah, without the green bit. <laughs> I wish I could do that. Well, it can be arranged without the angry bit, thankfully. So 
They go from little, sweet and innocent eye-fluttering fish to spiky, big-eyed, scary fish in seconds. Well, you know, those Christmas tree worms are pretty impressive shape changers too. So I guess puffers must be linked to our Christmas tree worms by their Hulk-esque ability to change shape. Q model number five. Mmm, orange horns. Do you think they'll catch on? Not sure I'll be investing, although I am digging the rest of the outfit. I think the stripes and orange are really individual. Yeah, not to mention the orange fluffy tail type thing. And matching orange trim. It's a very out there outfit. This one dresses to impress. I'm not sure if I'd put orange with black and white stripes, but you know, I think he may just carry it off. Let me introduce you to the magnificent, graceful, colourful nudibranch, or the naked slug, as it's also known. Are you serious? Wouldn't life be much brighter if all slugs looked like this? <laughs> yeah. The name comes from the fact that they have no protective shells. That's why they find other ways to keep enemies away. Very nice. But why the wonderful outfits? Well, their patterns are a not very subtle warning for enemies to stay away. Help! Help me! Which is lucky, actually, as they haven't got much else going for them, have they? They move so slowly. <laughs> oh, wow, this is better. I was wondering how they swim, you know, seeing as they've got no fins and everything. That looks like a full-on workout. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That nudibrank is a goner. Oh, contraire, Barney. See, the fish takes a little lick and decides that's enough, unless he wants a really bad taste in his mouth. <laughs> it's another classic case of looking good, tasting bad. It's nature's way of warning off predators. Um, why is he lifting up his skirt? Uh, that's how they crawl along the ground, prancing along the catwalk. What model behaviour? So, who is linked to and why, please? Well, it's obvious, really. Remember why the pufferfish blows himself up like a balloon? Yep, to warn off predators. Oh, hang on. I've got it. That's the same reason the nudie ranks are so colourful. The connection is fashion warning signs. There you go. Next, the flounder. Oh, well, this is exciting, Jen. Patience, Barney. Oh, oh, yes. Now that is camouflage. It's a fish. This is a flounder fish. They skulk along the ocean floor. Well, this one looks like he's been stood on. Sorry. But I have to say, it's a great hidden talent. <laughs> Hang on a minute. One eye, two eyes. Two eyes on one side of his face. Yep, it's our flounder's most fashionable feature. The flounder starts off like most other fish, with an eye on each side of its head. But as it grows, one eye moves over, so both eyes are on one side. Hang on a minute. It moves round the side of its head. Why? Well, again, it's not just to stand out from the crowd. They live down on the sand for most of the time, so they need to be able to see upwards. And, of course, their colour camouflages them in the sand, so they're well hidden, but it can still see all around them. Huh. Wow, wow, look at him go! That's not the same fish. He's almost graceful. Yep, that's another of his hidden talents. Ah, see, I knew you liked that joke. His flouncy swimming technique along with his camouflage coat mean that he is able to hide and escape. Cool, eh? So let me guess, the flounder is linked to our nudibranch because they both come out in a rash if they eat cheese. No, I'm only kidding. They're linked through their quirky style of swimming. <laughs> well, this geezer looks a bit sore. He's sore, all right. This is the sawfish. Hello, dear. With a super snout that's like a vacuum cleaner, metal detector and spiky baseball bat all rolled into one. He's another one that loves to hang out on the sandy bottom. Its shape tells it all, really. Flat head and body, light grey, or sometimes camouflaged to beige and brown. Oh, he's trying to tell us something. <laughs> or maybe he's got sand in his mouth from all that slinking along the bottom. <laughs> I doubt it. His body may look weird, but it helps him survive on the sand. Just like the flounder, with both eyes on one side of his head. The soaring sawfish and the funny flat flounder are linked because they both live on the sea floor. Who would have guessed these ocean creatures were so fashionable? So, how did we get from an underwater snake to a fish with a saw on its head? Our first catwalk contender, the skinny sea snake, is linked by his skinniness to our moray eel, who uses his shape to hide away, connecting him to the quirky Christmas tree worm. Not forgetting our puffer fish, my favourite so far, who pop themselves up like this to tell predators to get lost. Get lost. 
not as cool as the nudie Franks with their out there colourful style and catwalk prancing. See, I beg to disagree. Nothing beats the puffer fish. Although the prehistoric looking flounder with his weird double iron flapping swimming style does come quite close. He's linked to our flat snouty swordfish who along with the flounder lies flat and uses his sandy colour to merge into the sandy bottom. Right then, let's get back to our fashion parade. <laughs> Introducing our next ocean outfit. Uh, I'm sure he was here somewhere. I can't see anything. Hang on a minute, he's definitely... There he is, look! See? See that floating bit of seaweed? Yeah. That's him. He's called the Rock Moving Rass, or Dragon Rass. Should be called Invisible Rass. He's pretty difficult to see. Well, yeah, that's his party trick. He's only a baby rass. But like most babies in the sea world, he knows it's each fish for himself. And so he has clever ways of making sure he lives to be a grown-up. And pretending to be a bit of seaweed is one of them. Impressive. So the rock-moving Rass uses his outfit completely for survival. And there's another funny-looking geezer with a strange swimming style. Who's he? Well, it's funny you should notice the family resemblance. That is the grown-up version. What? Of the same fish? No way are they related. I know, this is another weird underwater phenomenon. They basically completely change outfits from babies to adults. Whoa, that's like you, looking like you as a kid, and then growing up to look like me, <laughs> if you get what I mean. Uh, kind of. So the babies may look floaty and weak, but it's all a clever device to make sure they all survive. Exactly. Along with their impressive front gnashers, which both babies and adults have, they know how to look after themselves. <laughs> So, our sawfish and rock-moving wrasse both model cool accessories, but are linked by one of their most prominent features, their teeth. Now, I'll show you fashion. Here's our next model. Those of you with queasy stomachs should turn away now. Ew! What on earth is that? <laughs> I know what I think it looks like. Barney, people might be eating. Don't go there. <laughs> Welcome to the world of the sea cucumber. Sea cucumber? You're making that up. They just look like blobs to me. Well, not all of them. Look, this one's quite pretty. Yeah. OK, the pink one's not bad, but I'm not sure they belong on our fishy fashion catwalk. Oh, yes, they do. They are a big presence in the reef, Gem. There's over 1,200 different species of them. They come in loads of different shapes, can bury themselves in the sand, and best thing of all, they breathe through their bottom. <laughs> Next, please. Look, you just haven't given the cucumbers a chance. Listen, they can grow up to two metres. That's taller than you, by the way. No, nope, they're too ugly. I can't believe you went off on this tangent just to get sea cucumbers in this show. So sea cucumbers are, kind of, according to Barney, connected to the rock-moving rats by their ability to change shape. Now, back to the premier ocean fashion catwalk. This is another ocean example of Who's the Daddy? The little fish, like this one, have white circles with black and blue, but their parents look like this one. Yellow lines, yellow tail, and a patch over the eye, cos they're pirates. Ahoy, me hearty! <laughs> I like the baby outfits best. Definitely more individual. There's loads more angelfish outfits, and they all change their fashion sense as they get older. So, it's a bit like the fish version of wrinkles, but a lot prettier. Kind of, but it's possibly also a form of camouflage amongst the corals and water. Things like those stripes help break up the fish's outline. It's a bit like wearing army camouflage. I'm impressed. These guys are real transformers. A bit like the rock-moving wrasse. Spot on. The connection between the rock-mover wrasse and the angelfish is that they are always changing their outfits. OK, up next, the butterfly fish. Aw, some nice fluorescent coats and the ever-popular stripes. Very pretty. And a very defining spot on the tail. Oh, like a beauty spot. Well, kind of. These are butterfly fish. Pretty, but cunning. You see, the spot is there to trick predators. Aha! More ocean trickery. It's an eye spot. See that black band over their real eyes? Yes. Yeah. Well, butterfly fish disguise their bombs as heads, so predators aim for what they think is their head. <laughs> Only to find out they've tried to bite its bottom. Well, they don't even get that far, as it gives the fish a chance to escape. Cunning and colourful. Hmm. Real tricksters, these creatures. First the angelfish with their puzzling patterns, and now these. You're not wrong. Butterfly fish are linked back to our angelfish by their army-style confusion tactics. But now, something a little different. Talking of eyes, this clever dude goes one step further. This show just gets weirder. What's that? That is a crocodile fish. See the resemblance? Ah, yeah, definitely has the croc's snout and menacing eyes. Thank you. Ah, well, this is the clever bit. If you look a little closer, 
Do you think his eyes are open? Uh, shut? Oh, maybe open. No, 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 definitely shut. Nope, they're definitely open, and he can see all around him. These fish are not related to the crocodiles, but they're just as crafty. The crocodile fish has these quite elaborate painted eyelids around his eyeballs. Whoa, they're cool, but why? Well, it's to disguise their eyes from predators and prey, because when you're underwater, open eyes make you stand out. So this is a cunning way of watching your prey and predators without being caught. So it's like having tattooed eyelids that look good, but also allow you to wait unnoticed in the shadows. <laughs> They have quite an edgy fashion sense, the crocodile fish. They've definitely got the edge when it comes to eye markings, although the butterfly fish's false eyes weren't bad either. So clever eye markings link the cunning crocodile fish to the beautiful butterfly fishes. <laughs> dude going to a carnival. Now that is some headdress. I don't know, but he definitely looks like he's going to some kind of fancy dress party. I think he wears his outfit by far the best. His daring headdress and tail feathers, along with the subtle effective stripes. Yes, they make him stand out from the crowd. I'm impressed with this collection. I have to agree with you, unfortunately. This is the lionfish. Yeah, it kind of suits him, that name, you know, with his magnificent mane and I'm the king of the fish aura. Well, he's also known as the turkey fish. Now, he's better looking than the turkey for sure. The dragonfish. A little bit, but dragons are fiercer. And the scorpion fish. <laughs> OK, how many names does one fish need? Well, there's a hint in some of those names. He may look like he's dressed to impress, but as ever, there's a reason why. Those ever-so-pretty spines contain a deadly poison for defence against predators. They stalk their prey first. Hang on a minute, how can they stalk anyone? They stand out a mile. Well, that's why they use their colouring as camouflage. And they can move around using their mad outfit to confuse predators. It's a bit like me doing a silly dance to distract a robber coming towards me. Can't quite see that working as well, though. It's another example of confusing camouflage, linking our lionfish to the butterfly fish. <laughs> oh, move out of the way, little fish. We can't see that uh, stone behind you. You mean the stone with the fangs? Wow, now that is what I call camouflage. Or are you winding me up and it really is a stone? Nope, he's real. This is the wobbygong shark. Yeah, I reckon it should be called the mophead shark. <laughs> yeah, you're not far off. This particular species is called the Eucrosorhinus daisy pogon. See, now you're just showing off. And that roughly translates as well-fringed nose with shaggy beard, or more commonly known as the tasseled wobbygong. Or mophead shark. I'm calling him that from now on. <laughs> OK. Well, this one is the spotted wobbygong. He can grow up to three metres, and his spots and colour, along with those shaggy flaps of skin around the mouth, mean he really is the king of camouflage. You're telling me he's practically invisible. Here one minute and what be gone the next? Get me out of here! Um, moving on. So his outfit means he's also confusingly camouflaged, which links him nicely to the lionfish. <laughs> Here's another example. This baby batfish. What baby batfish? I can just see two dead leaves. Ah, you fall for it every time. I'll help you out this time. Look. This next fish is a bit of a copycat. Batfishes have their own sense of style, but also like to mimic. <laughs> Well, if I was going to mimic, I'd choose something better than a dead leaf. Whatever. Well, so would I, but then we're not in danger of being eaten. That's a fair point. And it is a great copy. It's very, very leafy. So he blends in perfectly, just like the mop-headed Wobbygong. <laughs> wow, hello, enormous flying fish that flies through water. He's one of the coolest animals in the ocean. I thought we had to include the manta rays in our ocean fashion show. He looks like a mahoosive bat. Well, they are amazing animals. They're graceful, dignified. They've got smiley faces under their bodies. Those are its gills. There's loads of cool things about the manta ray, but the best is how they use their amazing shape and colour to hide away. Surely not. They're too big to hide away. True, they are one of the biggest animals in the ocean. They can grow up to seven and a half metres. Wow, that's big. That's four and a bit barnies. One, two, three, four... Whoa, scary. Let's move on. 
Believe it or not, despite their huge frame and unusual shape, they can still camouflage themselves pretty effectively by something called counter shading. Ah, is that slim shading? Huh? Oh, no more bad jokes, although you're not so far off. Counter shading is where the animal's skin is deliberately different colours to reduce the shadows cast on their body. OK, I'm with you so far. Would you elaborate? Well, seen from the top, the mantis' darker area will blend into the water below, but from below, the lighter area will blend into the sunlight from the surface. Clever, eh? Yeah, just another example of making the most of your shape and colour. So our mantas are connected to our batfish through crafty camouflage. These trendsetters don't seem to know what they want in an outfit. They're always changing their mind. So how do we work our way from the sawfish to the massive manta ray again? So the flat snouty sawfish links to the baby wrasse by one of their most prominent features, their teeth. They basically completely change outfits from babies to adults. Which joins him to the sea tomato, sorry, sea cucumber, by their ability to change shape. And to the angelfish, as they both completely change outfits when they grow up. And our angelfish is linked to the pretty butterfly fish through their cunning colours. Butterfly fish connects the crocodile fish with his tattooed lids because of their penchant for clever markings. But lionfish with his confusing camouflage goes one better. As does our wobbegong shark. Or our biggest bat like fish, the manta ray, who sneaking in the shadows keeps him hidden from unwanted eyes. Whoever next? <laughs> Hello, handsome. Now, one guess why he's called a frogfish. He looks like a frog and hops like a frog. But not nearly as effectively. One thing's for sure, they certainly weren't first in the queue when swimming techniques were handed out. They have to use their modified fins as legs. It's their only way of moving. Wow, he's a real bumbler. Now, he may look a bit daft, but he knows exactly what he's doing. This guy takes camouflage mimicry to a whole new level. Frogfish can pretend to be pretty much anything around them. This Chewbacca frogfish here is pretending to be that floaty weed stuff. Not to mention our magnificent fluorescent yellow froggy, who wants us to think he's a sponge. Oh, hello. Mr Blackfish, now black really suits you. So they do their best to blend in, just like the massive manta ray. Our clumsy but clever frogfish is linked to the manta ray through camouflage. <laughs> so we've had one master of disguise meet another. OK, I'm ready. Now, I'm guessing that may or may not be an eye. Uh, oh, oh, now. Now he is master of disguise. Who's this geezer? Yep, our stonefish here takes camouflage to a whole different level and it's all with a means to an end. Whoa, that fish had no chance. Play it again. He's one of the deadliest fish in the ocean, covered in venomous spikes, and with the bite speedy as a bullet, his prey hey. have no chance. <laughs> what? I reckon he's even better hidden than the hairy frogfish, and a lot more scary. So he's connected to our frogfish by being a magnificent master of disguise. Who else is connected to hop along? <laughs> He's a nifty little mover. He's a puffer fish. Oh, I like the one we saw earlier. He has those same weird little fins that don't look like they work. Ah, but that's why he's so deceptive, you see, Jem. He has a tail like a rudder. So despite his clumsy body, he can swim pretty well. Ah, cool. Next. No, no hang on, there's more. He's no ordinary puffer fish. Let's look at his face. Mm, and? OK, I'll give you a clue. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, he looks like a dog. <laughs> no, isn't that weird? He's called the dog-faced puffer fish, and you can see why. Oh. Oh, he's very cute. And our dog face connects to our frog face because they both look like land animals. <laughs> wow. Is it a fish? No, is it, is it a turtle? Is it a whale? What is it? <laughs> this Barney is a sunfish. Is it alive? I mean, no offence, mate, but it looks like someone forgot to finish you off. I know. He's a little weird looking for sure. Notice anything missing? Yeah, most of his body. But something in particular that might make him swim a little slower. Well, he's lacking something on the back end, like half a body. Yeah. The most distinguishing feature about the sunfish is what he doesn't have. He has no tail. That's why he just looks like a fish head. <sighs> So how does he get along and why is he only half built? Well, he uses fins to propel himself forward. No one really knows why he has no tail, but they think that just parts of the dorsal and anal fins at some point were extended and then joined back together again over the years to replace the tail fin. So that stumpy bit waving at the back is not a proper tail, but a kind of, well, pretend tail.
I bet he's gutted. I doubt it. He's still a pretty big presence in the reef. They can grow up to one and a half tonnes in weight, so he knows his place all right. Hey, it would take 16 average men to lift this big boy. Or 26 Barneys. Are you saying I'm below average? As if. Tell you something, though, he's not the life and soul of a party, is he? Or top in our fashion parade, for that matter. Oh, I don't know. I think grey's always in vogue. Definitely some weird back ends going on in this show. Just look at Dogface. Yep, our tailless sunfish is attached to the Dogface puffer as they both adapted their bodies to get around. One with a rudder tail and one with no tail at all. OK, who's next? Bring it on. OK, from the sublime to the ridiculous. Or should I say, from no tail to all tail. Hmm, guess what this fish is called? Tailfish, wormfish, tell you what, seaweed fish. Uh, you're a bit close. This is the pikefish. Ah, that was my next one. Really? <laughs> the name comes mainly from his snout, which is a long tube with a narrow opening like a pipe. Why is he doing that weird slow pirouetting movement? Well, believe it or not, they're not great swimmers either. They only have that little dorsal fin to move them forward, and even if they flap it really quickly, they still move quite slowly. And they're tiny, they're only 20 centimetres, and that weird floaty movement they do is similar to their relative, the seahorses. The pipefish are connected with the bumbling sunfish because they don't swim with their tails. So our fishy models have strutted their stuff down the ocean catwalk. Let's take a look at that from the beginning. Our skinny sea snake was our first catwalk contender, linked to the skinny moray eel, who can quickly hide away like the comical Christmas tree worm. Next up, the puffer fish, who puff themselves up to scare their enemies, linked to the naughty nudies, who look good but taste foul. Ah, but what about the double-eyed flounder, who links to our other fabulous flatty, the sawfish? Our sawfish and rock-moving wrasse are linked by one of their most prominent features, their teeth. The rock-moving wrasse basically completely change outfits from babies to adults. Like the sea cucumber. Oh, oh, take it oh. It's just a cucumber, it's yeah. not got the sea on the front of it. Do you want some? No. It's tasty. Ew. You could have it on a sandwich. <laughs> the wrasse is also linked to the angelfish as both transform from baby to grown-up who links to the butterfly fish through its incredible confusion tactics, like the tattooed eyelided crocodile fish and the lionfish with their confusing camouflage collection. Enter the mop-headed wobbygong shark, so camouflaged he's practically invisible, just like our baby batfish. Or our bigger bat-like fish, the manta ray, whose sneaking in the shadows keeps him hidden. Next up, the frogfish, another master of the skies. Confusing all right, like the stonefish, the ultimate background blender, allowing him to snap at his prey from out of nowhere. Linked to the dog face puffer, with the face of a dog and a pretty fine flipper. Unlike the docile and dawdling sunfish, his lack of tail means he doesn't get anywhere very quickly. Just like the pipefish, another catwalk skinny mini. So that's our fashion parade finish. What a collection, eh? And of course, they all have in common their ability to use their outfits and appearance to ensure survival in the wondrous world of the Barrier Reef. And some of them use camouflage too. Barney, what are you doing? Shh, Jem, you can't see me. I'm hiding. I'm camouflaged. Look. But I can see you. Oh. How does the flounder do it? I can't work it out. Try and put me suit on him. 